Today, I wanna to share the coolest photo editing upgrade that I've done in a really long time. It's great with both my PC and my Mac. Uh, this little dock feels like it was made for me. It's by OWC. I'll walk you through why it's so awesome. Well, hey everyone, Hudson here. And, and I can just hear you saying like, why is Hudson so excited about this little black metal piece of computer equipment? And I guess it's because it fits so beautifully into my current workflow and into where I see the storage mediums that we use, the, the, the computer equipment that we're using and how it's all evolving into the future. I think this thing is made to just walk us into the future of photo and video editing. And I feel as if I might have been in the room whispering to the engineers as they designed this thing because they made it exactly like I'd like it. And it's incredible quality, super rock stable and ridiculously fast. So we'll walk through why the ports on this thing are so exciting, why it's a little bit better than any other Thunderbolt uh, dock that's out there on the market. And I've tried a bunch of those, why it really fits into a photographer or videographer's uh, editing workflow so well. And then I'll show you a few demonstrations. You know, be Before we do that, uh, I'm gonna just give a couple little terminology tips here. We're gonna be talking about Thunderbolt and USB 3.2 and gigabits per second. Not gigabytes, gigabits per second. So I just want everyone to know that the, the connection that this has into your computer via its Thunderbolt port is gonna be 40 gigabits per second. And that is essentially a pipeline that's capable of carrying up to five gigabytes per second. You see a lot of things that are labeled 10 gigabits per second, like there's 10 gigabit ethernet connection on the back of this, which is really exciting. Uh, 10 gigabits is 1250 megabytes per second, 1.25 gigabits per second, or gigabytes per second. So when we talk about 10 gigabits per second, we're talking about 1250 megabytes per second. When we talk about Thunderbolt and 40 gigabits per second, we're talking about up to five gigabytes per second, which is really, really fast. So this thing can connect a whole bunch of stuff into it and be pumping that into your computer through a Thunderbolt three or four connection at five gigabytes per second with them all combined. So that's exciting to know. You have to make sure that you use the correct cable that came with it. You can't just plug a USB-C cable into it, you're gonna to need to use this Thunderbolt 4 cable that came with the device and you plug it into the port on the back that says 85 watts and has a Thunderbolt symbol, a little Thunderbolt symbol. So this thing works just as well on my PC laptop, my Dell XPS 15, as it does with my new Mac Studio Ultra computer. Um, as long as you've got an open Thunderbolt port, this suddenly turns that into a whole porcupine of amazingness connectivity wise for you to use with all of your photo and editing equipment. So the other thing to know about it is that it is the second generation from OWC of this dock. This is the OWC Thunderbolt Pro dock. They made a Thunderbolt 3 Pro dock, a little bit confusing. It looks almost the same, but it's not as fast and it doesn't have a compact flash express B card slot on the front. It has a C fast slot, which is different. Uh, and something that I've never even used. Compact Flash Express B for those of us that shoot Nikon or professional video editing equipment, the fastest possible memory card system out there. Uh, and this reads it faster by almost twice as fast as the Lexar drive that I was using that I thought was the fastest before. It's, it's as fast as your card can go, up to 1600 megabytes per second I've tested it. So it, it, it's insanely fast, I'll showcase that. Um, it's also got an SD4 card reader. It's a little bit funny, the SD4 card reader. It works great. It's fast as any SD card that I've been able to test on it. But you know, if I pull the SD card out of my Leica Q2 and put it in here, don't try to put it in right side up with the label up. It has to go in looking like it's upside down with the contacts facing up. It's down near the bottom and that's the way the reader works. You just slap it in there and it'll connect and read it really, really quickly. So on the front, of this Thunderbolt dock, and when it's fanless. The old version had a fan built in, so it made a little noise. This one's fanless and runs cool as can be. I've been running it for about a month, and there has been zero problem with it. No loss of connectivity. And I'll say, I've run a whole bunch of different Thunderbolt hubs and docks, including this CalDigit Thunderbolt 3 
dock, which has had a few connectivity issues with me over the years that I've used it. I know they have a CalDigit Thunderbolt 4 dock. It does not have a Compact Flash Express B reader on it. It does not have 10 gigabit ethernet. It has half that speed with five gigabit ethernet. Um, so significantly different, 600 and 625 megabytes per second or something like that instead of 1250. All right. So on the front, you got your CF Express B reader, by far the fastest I've yet tested. A SD4 reader, a USB 3.2, 10 gigabits per second port, USB A, the, the old traditional style USB. You got to use a fast, super speed capable cable, but this will carry 1250 megabytes per second through it. It's got Another one of those USB 3.2 and USB-C flavor on the back that carries 10 gigabits per second, along with two more of those USB-A, all of them are 10 gigabits per second. So each one of these can carry up to 1250 uh, megabytes per second through it, 1.25 gigabytes per second. If I said that wrong earlier, don't judge me. All right, so then it's got that thing of all things, the 10 gigabit ethernet port. Now the only computer I've had so far or really seen very often is this Mac Studio that has a 10 gigabit ethernet port. What's so special about that? Well, you're able to plug in a network cable, you know, with the giant old phone cable style connector, the RJ45, into the back of this and bring data in at 10 gigabits per second from something like a high speed network with super fast internet connectivity or more commonly, a network attached storage device. And we're gonna talk more about network attached storage in the months ahead. Uh, I've been using a big eight bay Synology network attached storage system that feeds data in it over a gigabyte a second from eight big spinning hard drives with an SSD cache. And it holds, I mean, if you rigged it out with 20 terabyte hard drives, you would have just an ungodly amount, like 140 terabytes, it's crazy. Um, so you know, the ability to get big storage that pipes data in really, really quickly for editing and you don't need to worry about having a whole bunch of hard drives and where are things stored and has built-in redundancy is pretty nuts. All through a network cable that can stretch for 100 feet away from your machine and connect into multiple computers at the same time to all be accessing that information really, really quickly. So it's definitely the future and you're gonna see more and more of this high-speed networking capability this is one of, believe it or not, the cheaper ways to get it piped into your computer. You know, I told you that CalDigit has a Thunderbolt 4 dock coming out. Well, that thing's exactly the same price as this, but only has half the networking speed capabilities. And as I said, no Compact Flash Express B reader on it. So the fact that it has those two ports in and of itself is amazing. Then it has two Thunderbolt ports. One's gonna run out to your computer and connect this hub into the system and it has 85 watt charging capability. So if you use this with your laptop, it's gonna keep your laptop charged and you're not gonna to have to use one of those Thunderbolt ports for an additional charger. If you think about it, most of our PCs and Macs these days are having less and less connections on the computer and instead giving you a few Thunderbolt connections, which is that big 40 gigabit per second gateway to plug something like this into it that you can plug all kinds of other stuff. That's the trend of the future and this, thing makes more use of a single one of these little Thunderbolt ports on a system like this or on your laptop. And I know those of you with MacBook Pros, those little Thunderbolt ports are sort of precious. You plug this into it, all of a sudden you have all these ports on it. In addition, there's another Thunderbolt port of 15 watt charging capability. So it'll charge a lot of stuff at the same time as flowing data through it up to 40 gigabytes per second. So you don't lose that port that you plug this into, you've got another one piggybacking into it. So it basically gives you that port back along with a, uh, along with a monitor, a DVI connector. So it's gonna give you the ability to run so many things at the same time through one port on your computer. It's just an awesome little thing. I love it, I've been enjoying it for the last month. I can't recommend it highly enough. So let me show you just how fast this CF Express B reader is in this thing. Okay, so I've got the OWC plugged in via Thunderbolt 4 into my Mac Studio. 
works the same with my laptop as the studio. I've also plugged in uh, a drive, a Samsung T7 drive that I have that I put my video editing projects on so I can edit those on either my laptop or, or my desktop. And I've got my Lightroom catalog drive, my Lexar uh, Blaze drive, both plugged in to the Thunderbolt hub. And I've tested them and they're just as fast. I'm getting over a gigabyte a second with the Lexar Blaze. Just the same as if I plugged it into a straight Thunderbolt port on the Mac Studio. It's just astounding how fast it's transferring data. So then if I open up my Z9 and I pull out my Cobalt, um, my ProGrade Cobalt CF Express B card and plug it in here and you're gonna see it light up on my desktop. There it is, Nikon Z9. So we'll just open that guy up. And I'm gonna take my cell phone uh, with my stopwatch app open on it. And here we've opened that folder in the Mac Finder. It's in a window there. I've got this folder on my desktop with some video from Charleston in 2019. It's some of the workshop and people that I was running, some of wildlife. It's got some short clips, long clips. It's a, it's a folder that I often use to test hard drive speeds and things like that. It's about 67 gigabytes. So what I'm gonna do is pick it up and I'm gonna drop it into our uh, CF Express B, that, that Cobalt uh, ProGrade card, at the same time as I hit start on my stopwatch. And you can follow along with this if you want. So it's loading in there right now um, and it looks like at a little faster than a gigabyte a second. I will hit stop when it gets close to end. I'm gonna open up my, uh, my Mac calculator at the same time here. And we're looking at 67.41, that's 67,410 megabytes. So we're gonna see how many megabytes per second this thing's flowing at. And I'll go ahead and hit stop at the same time as this file transfer ends. It's going pretty fast across into this card right now, let's see. Boom, 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 let's see. And again, this is coming off the SSD of the Mac Pro or the Mac Studio. And boop, there we go. All right, so 52 seconds. I'm gonna hit enter a couple times. I'm a reverse Polish uh, notation calculator science nerd aficionado. So 52 seconds, we're gonna divide that into those 67,000 megabytes. And it comes up that it's moving data onto the card at 1300 megabytes per second. That's writing speed. Let's check out and see how fast it can read. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll delete uh, this folder off my desktop and maybe we'll just empty the trash to make sure it's not just sitting there. Boom, there that goes. All right, and, and let's reset my stopwatch here. I'm gonna log in, reset it to zero. And we're gonna do the same little test for, for write speed. Here we go, we'll hit start at the same time as I let go of my mouse and it starts transferring. And I'm gonna go ahead and flip these two numbers around, hit enter one more time so we can enter how many seconds this takes. Wow, it's moving really fast reading. So this is testing how fast can it read through that CF Express B reader. Uh, and remember, you know, I think that my Lexar uh, card reader was under 800 megabytes per second, was about as fast as I could get it using the same card. And it was the fastest card reader, you know, in, in, in reality that I had tested before this OWC Thunderbolt Pro dock. All right, so I'm gonna hit stop. As soon as that's done, got my thumb ready. All right, we're looking at 42 seconds. So 42 divide 1605 megabytes per second. That's fast. That's about as fast as the card is rated as capable, uh, let alone sustained. So it's pretty darn cool. Um, I think that just shows you that I've been using this dock, as I said, with all kinds of stuff flowing through it. 10 gigabit ethernet, my Lightroom catalog drive, video editing drives. Never once has a drive disconnected. Never has this dock had a hiccup. It doesn't get more than just barely, it's hard to tell, it just feels like room temperature metal. It doesn't get hot despite not having a fan. It has the dream bunch of ports. Yes, it's 400 bucks, but man, does it future-proof your system. And it can bring a system that has Thunderbolt, but not some of those 
killer connections like 10 gigabit ethernet into the ability to bring in a network attached storage device or other things at that super high speed and access data in whole new ways that I think are gonna grow more and more important as we move forward with photography and video into the future. So I'm excited about it. Again, I put a link to this in this video's description. You can click on the title or show more. That's a link to b &H. Those links help me out. If they run out of stock, they have stock right now. You can get it for the same price from OWC direct through their website, Other World Computing. Uh, they've been making Mac accessories for years and have branched out into things for Thunderbolt that work with both Mac and PC. Um, and they build really good stuff. You know, I have decades of experience with them and nary a bad word to say about them. Again, you know, I'm also going to put this in the digital darkroom section of my ATS links webpage where I put links to all the gear that I use, stand by, and recommend. Those links help me out. I really appreciate it when you use them. You just go to HudsonHenry.com slash ATS links and you can find them all there. So quick note before I sign off, we've got office hours this Tuesday, December 13th. We're going to be talking about uh, resolutions, goals for your photography in 2023. Big live group meeting on Zoom or YouTube Live. I love when you sign up for Zoom and I can see all your faces in the room while we're chatting. We'll have Woody, Darren, Rick, uh, David Archer hopefully with us all talking about this. Uh, and you know, when you sign up, you can sign up for Zoom or YouTube Live. We'll archive a copy of the office hours on YouTube if you watch it later, if you can't make it there with us on December 13th, 10 a.m. Pacific. But if you can join us live, you know, we'll take your questions live. We'll also be looking at questions that you submit when you sign up. So sign up over at HudsonHenry.com slash office hours. I hope everybody is having a great holiday, whatever holidays you celebrate. You know, my family just got back from the grandparents uh, in Florida. We had a really wonderful time just decompressing with the kids, building puzzles, playing on the beach, eating good food, spending time with family. And to me, that's, that's sort of what the holidays is all about, right? It's family, it's friends, it's sharing, it's decompressing, relaxing, uh, remembering what's important in life. And I hope all of you are getting a healthy dose of that this holiday season uh, and staying safe, staying creative, and hey, you know, I hope to see you Tuesday in the office hours, but for sure I'll see you next week.